Har vi håndt ved? Ouch. <laughs> Outtake. <laughs> Hi everyone, today we are talking about the two favorite art books by the Lego Goss. <laughs> so natural. Hi. You Hi. promised me cake. You will have cake. Where's my cake? Soon. <laughs> uh, he's, he's visiting over the weekend and uh, Raiko is, um, is uh, uh, an art director at uh, Enno Games in Hamburg. And uh, he has a really good taste in art. So I figured, what the hell, just bring your books along and uh, we will talk a little bit about what you like. So, what do we so. have here? So, we have two books. We have D'Artist Mad Painting. Is that even pronounced like that? I don't know. D'Artiste. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and that's actually the first art book I've ever owned, so it has a very special uh, place in my heart. When uh, did you get it? I don't exactly remember. It has to be around 2008. How much did you pay? Do you remember? 30 bucks, probably. Mm -hmm. And the second one is a, a, a present op that I got, and it's the art of this honor too. And also that has a very special place in my heart because uh, it features some of my favorite artists ever. Who are these? Say, Sergei Koyeso, for example, or Cedric. I don't ha know how to not pronounce that name. Mraba, hello, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're gonna butcher a lot of names today uh, to, to the maximum extent. As usual. <laughs> um, which one should we start with? Let's start with this one because we don't have to unpack. Let's go. All right, so. So what makes this one so special to you? Yeah, it starts with a white page. <laughs> it's a white, it's dark horse, of course. It's dark horse, um, it's, it's just the contents. I've never played the Dishonored games because of this art book. I never played them because I was deadly afraid that they would just disappoint me after seeing all those pieces by all those artists I admire so much. Wow, that's really good. This is, uh, it baffles me every time I go through the clarity of those artworks, the simplicity mm. is uh, unparalleled to me. You feel this is exactly what, what is necessary to, to um, create the mood in the game, to figure out the things in such a detail. Um, because I, I think this one hardly has has like much photo bashing and stuff like that, right? I mean, at, at least it's not that visible. Even if it would have photo bashing, it would just be the tool it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not against photo bashing at all. No, 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 no. Use no, it correctly, right. but this is completely about design, and uh, the world they built uh, in the games, from what I've seen again, I haven't played them. Mm -hmm. uh, is pretty unique and is interesting in every angle and you see those intricate details on the walls where someone really really thought about what's the pattern they would have in that particular building mm -hmm. uh, on that particular wall all the plants are designed all the animals are designed all the creatures all the uh, characters the characters are unique in itself and in, in the way they handle the proportions with those chunky legs and hands and uh Jablonski. yeah Piotr, uh, is the, the third artist I admire so much in here. He did a, a lot of those illustrations and so good. Um, yeah, sometimes I can't I, I can't uh, differentiate between Jablonski and and Sergei Koyesov. Mm. Uh, I don't see the difference because the art direction is just so tight. Mm. And you see, they they use all the tools. So there's three D inside, it seems, and uh, yeah. You just use it as a tool. Yeah. Characters and creatures. So these are the ones that are Look on... at those proportions. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, is... this is the work that mostly is on uh, visible always on on Instagram, right? Like the posts are always visible if you follow the right people, but also are being shared a lot. Yeah. So this is what you get on ArtStation. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> they sculpted this. This is amazing. Uh, are they for sale? Like, did they do anything with that? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. It, it might be a little bit hard because Pixar and, and companies like that, they usually always also sculpt uh, the characters because it gives you a completely different understanding of the mm. three-dimensionality of those guys, of the proportions. And um, I'm, I'm not aware of any... Be sale. But because, the yeah. artist is written underneath, so you can contact them directly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should, because it's really interesting to find I'll out. Look at the skin details. Yeah, yeah. 
but I'm even more blown away by the hands and the oh. pose and the proportions in that and the feeling. What am I doing? Like my, like my fucking sausage fingers would, would even <laughs> somehow resemble what this, what's happening there. This is so, so freaking elegant. Also the pose. It's yeah. so simple. Yeah. It's so effective, so natural. And look at the planes. I'm getting an orgasm when, when, when I try to follow the shapes there and uh, mm. the geometry they employ to build up those concepts. Where's the redhead guy? It should come very soon. Because that was the, the one where I cried, this one. <laughs> yeah. I cried. I found that so fantastic, those yeah. concepts. Yeah. And the feet, and the hands, and... Yeah, ah! this is all actual character. Like, you can really see the character behind this. You can read the faces. You can see what's behind it, what the intent is. How they probably will be when you have a conversation with them. This is really good. I think so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, now they go through all the other things they designed in the game because uh, characters and, and environments is usually the spotlight of, mm. of all the stuff. But here you have also the plant life. You have the graphic design, the posters, all that kind of <laughs> stuff later. Gorgeous. <clears throat> I didn't play the game either uh, yet because uh, at the time where I, had the, where I had the time to actually play it, I um, I felt like maybe the... Um, no, it was more like, was it even out on consoles at that time? I think most people were playing it at, on the PC, but I don't know. It's like, I didn't, I didn't have the time when it w w was out. And later when I had the time, I didn't really follow up because yeah. yeah, just, it was too late. I felt also. Let's do a let's play. Oh my God. <laughs> would be super boring. <laughs> He's just sitting there concentrating yeah. on the buttons. I'm not going to say yes. I, was that a yes? I'm not going to say yes. Can we edit that to say yes? Uh, I love those pages because um, that it's it's just so simple. <laughs> Again, it's really it looks as if someone with graphite. Uh, I think it's digital or it might be inked or something like that. Probably digital if you look yeah, at it. Yeah, it's probably digital, but it has this appeal, and you see this artist would be easily able to do that uh, with a pencil with graphite. Um, but I'm not sure because there's a lot of smudges and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you can get that uh, with, with digital media mm -hmm. if you work pretty... I'm ending the sentence here. That's good. We're gonna edit that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, shapes. Yeah, I've seen... Shapes, that. shapes, shapes. Look at those scissors. Uh, it's, it's a back mm. part from a scissor to me. And all the angles they, they go into. <sighs> I remember I remember my friend, uh, when I was a kid, he was starting fencing. And he got a uh, florette and it had this, this weird shape that was going around the hands in all kinds of ways. And um, that was new to me. I always, only just knew the standard, uh, standard way to hold a, a, um, a sword. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this, this was so weird to me to, to see someone actually thinking about how to make it possible that someone holds it in that fashion. And um, yeah, I'm going to edit this too. <laughs> um, That's a pity because now I'm taking reference to what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. He's going to edit that. <laughs> or not. Oh, tapes. Have you seen the grenade? Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, those yeah, forms, yeah. how they, someone really studied that. Yeah. I'm fairly convinced it, it would work. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, and that's what, what it is about. It's, it's really, you take the world you just built and you make every little piece about those those bugs those creatures and you employ that in all the designs so you have to basically rethink everything mm. and combine it with with the reality here's the scissor again mm. um that was just such a such a great idea mm. 
yeah, you combine it with the reality that we live in and you get this believable space that follows different rules that might even have magic like here and uh, still you believe it, you buy into it. Yeah. So those pages, you even have the visual effects mm. and all the shapes they think about uh, in, in regards to that. Because that's also basically, it, it might be an etherical thing, it might be just an explosion, just an explosion. No. But it still follows the same roots of composition, it's still, uh, you still need to think about shapes and, and movement and interesting movement for that matter. Oh, I, I love this part the most, <sighs> yes. when, when they start showing like... This the, the graphic design part basically to make everything believable like campaigns and stuff like that oh it's so good they added this so good wait a second this is, is that just no between? that's just one no crocodile tracks again even the drinks <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> it must have been this project must have been so much fun and so much work and so hard to pull off also yeah, look at yeah, those yeah, lines yeah. this is crazy i hope it was fun and not just crunch it, or something no it it looks as if there's a lot of fun and exploration inside uh, can't can't judge no yeah yeah i want that Yes, I want everything about that. That looks, that looks great. <laughs> My living room could li uh, look like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. This this looks nice. There should have been a captain's chair on some Federation starship. Concept artists out there, do chairs. Yeah, please. And sell them. Yeah. <laughs> to IKEA and stuff, because it has to be affordable too. <laughs> <clears throat> Not going into, into that IKEA? kind of talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. This is cool. This is so sexy. That's really old timer meets uh, carrion. Yeah, is yeah. Is it ca called carrion in English? I don't know. What, you mean chariot? Chariot. Oh, mm. sure. Yeah. <laughs> and this this went, of course, everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw that on social media. I think that's even on my on my phone. No, no, not on this oh. one, unfortunately. On my old phone. That was the so cool. <laughs> This went everywhere, the uh, illustration of Sergei Koyetsu yeah, or Kotaku. I, uh, I saw that one yeah. too. I mean, this, this is the cover, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Not too much. Oh, wow. Piotr. Mm. So good. Oh, wow. That's also Sergei. <laughs> what a this change. Guy, this guy is one of the most changeable artists I've ever seen. One, one mind that does anything in storytelling, anything in graphic design, anything from those colorful, super stylized, half abstract pieces to a fully rendered uh, spreads that you would use as a cover. I put this on a wall or something. Yes. Just so good. Yeah. I remember this one. I remember seeing that one. Really a badass book. I'm gonna get that too. Is there also one like for, for I think, oh, this is this one or two. I yes. thought it was just one. Okay, nice book, get it. It's really good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get it. And I might play the game after all. <laughs> yeah, right. So, the second one. This series was um, a series by Ballistic uh, that I remember had a lot of, um, a, a lot of entries. Um, they were maybe the first company that did art books in that regard, where they gathered two or three artists and put them in a book and made it about 
I don't know. A specific topic. I don't know either. I mean, there was the expose by them. It's it's the first one I was aware of, at least. Yeah. Okay, so it's a soft cover um, with with a flap and uh, thin paper, but yeah, the opacity is like of a thin paper, obviously. Um, do you remember how much it was? Is there a price on it? I think around thirty bucks. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Okay. We could check the ISBN. I think in Germany we have a book Yeah, I will. I will have a look if it's still on on sale. Then uh, then we will know. But um, yeah, let's let's have a quick look through this one. Yeah, this one was actually a little bit of an eye opener for me. Uh, so I, yeah, I when I was studying, I didn't have internet. That was weird uh, because I was really really poor <laughs> and I could not afford an internet connection at home. So we would just have uh, in the facility where I studied some internet that yeah. was available some of the time. Yeah, uh, when you get a free uh, computer there, because it wasn't. It was also not the time where you would have uh, Wi-Fi covering in in an area, and you would have a cell phone yeah. that would be able to just log in. And that was one of the first looks into the industry to me. It was one of the first time where you would see a complete portfolio of some some artists mm -hmm. like uh, Dylan Cole or Alp Altiner, and Chris Stotsky is the third one, I think. Stotsky, uh, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we mispronounce everything here today, <laughs> and it was enormously interesting because it hit me at the time where I still had this intellectual approach to art that I have to paint everything. So every little stone, every little look, nook and cranny, every branch, everything had to be painted because I have to paint it. Mm -hmm. uh, no other reason, just I have to paint because, it. Because, yeah. Just because, uh, because you can't do photo bashing because that's cheap. Oh yeah. And uh, you don't cheat and you would not do something like that. Employing 3D, oh gosh, no, <laughs> of course not. That is ridiculous. I'm a great artiste, mm -hmm. uh, so I have to paint everything. I'm ridiculing, uh, ridiculing it a little bit because um, it's not the healthiest approach for a production artist. Uh, I'm, I, I hold the opinion that you should use every tool and learn how to use those tools and uh, learn how to employ them to the greatest effect mm. and if you use photo bashing uh, the best case scenario for you is that you use it and it saves you a shit ton of time and nobody notices it because mm. you know how to handle the tools mm -hmm. you know what it's supposed to be you know what's the style and you use it in a way uh, that makes sense for this kind of style and for this kind of painting uh, to save your ass in, on the line yeah and this book um did two things very well to me. The first thing was, it showed me that you can do photo bashing and use 3D and all those tools and whatever uh, you want. And the second one is that you can also fail in that. <laughs> <laughs> because not every piece in this book is brilliant. Not every piece is top notch. So you, of course, you have Dylan Cole, who is a legend nowadays in the industry as an art director. He did Avatar and a lot of stuff. And when I Googled him the first time, it was really funny because I didn't get his matte paintings. I got two little boys, Dylan and Cole from Hotel Zack and Cody. Oh, <laughs> those twins. <laughs> oh, okay. I remember that. No, uh, not everything in here is great. And um, that was also really important for me to understand that people who are brilliant in their craft still have rushes at one point or another, still have to just conceptualize stuff. And since it's a matte painting that they're conceptualizing, they just bash photos together and they get the approximate spirit. Not every branch is perfectly lit. Not every photograph is perfectly sharp. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you have contrast in that. And that's fine. It's fine to have pieces like, like this one. I, I really dislike this one and I really like it for me disliking it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because it starts with a okay photograph, it starts start, it's, it's dates start with a good photograph, but it's it's muddy and, and weird, and then just on the first step, the artist gets all the interesting shapes and makes it boring, and then adds a light, and 
some unrealistic clouds, but that's fine for what it is. Mm. It's not supposed to be the super realistic matte painting. It's supposed to show a mood or an idea or, or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that was an important realization. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you guys make art books at uh, Inno Games? No, not that I'm aware of. You think they so, should? We, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, we do mobile games. Um, I think some of them we do well. Uh, they perform very well, mm -hmm. and they are crafted uh, to generate revenue mm -hmm. and uh, to be, on the other hand, fair to the player. To mm -hmm. be not pay to win. Uh, to have no uh, crazy loot boxes and gambling mechanics. Yeah. So we try to be fair. Uh, and when I art direct the games uh, that I'm working on, I don't look at the most exceptional quality of rendering, not the most exceptional quality of, um, of image in the end, because it's a production piece. I look for the piece that communicates to our outsourcers and to our 3D artists, mm. Uh, what we want the best and uh, I try to be pretty rational about it and uh, yeah you have also I also have to wager time versus uh, versus effort versus uh, readability in the end and of course we could spend another day on every single piece mm. but that would be for a book then mm. that would be uh, to jerk off to yourself that you did it <laughs> and that's amazing yeah. occasionally we do that because we're human Mm -hmm. But in the end, um, I try to employ a certain pragmatism uh, in, in every piece. Yeah. It is about communicating an idea, it is about communicating uh, design, and it is about the realization in 3D in the end, and to put it in a game fitting to all the other assets, interesting in itself, mm -hmm. lively and, and colorful and, and uh, juicy, as, or, or buttery, as you like to say. <laughs> buttery is, is the nice word for the game I'm directing. Buttery. Yes. <laughs> nice. This Should I do the Ricky Gervais drop? Where, where people I... have to check out the game. I don't do that. <laughs> no. Oh, no. You mean, <laughs> you mean like with his afterlife stuff? Yes. Fuck everything. Watch afterlife. No, you did. So much better. Mm. At the time where I got this book, I was also really confused because I thought uh, it must be painted. Oh, it can't be painted. Mm. And uh, sometimes it is actually painted, uh, which is surprising. Yeah. All right. Uh, in, in that regard, there is this cathedral here somewhere. We have seen that while going through. Uh, since we are well prepared right here on the stream, I exactly <laughs> stream. pointed okay. out. No, stream. Please, no stream. Yeah, yeah. I'm not no streaming. Stream. We're not streaming. We are cutting the crap out of that. Oh, this one. This one. And I, I, I just want to point you to, to uh, one hard realization, because I always thought um, that the, the mountains in the background are a little weird. They're super close to the cathedral. They are super... Um, th that looks like a weird photo bash to me. Mm. But here's the sketch of the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> you see it. It's really... You, you can follow those wanes and those tiny little details in the mountain sketch that is roughly put down, just very, very roughly sketched in <laughs> and then colorized and everything is still present. And I assume at, at one or two points, he just put in a bit of photographic texture, a little bit. But in here, you, you can see the same details going through the whole image and it is actually painted. And that made me tremendously happy that mm. this guy really knows his shit and knows how to do it and knows how to uh, bring together a painting that works by just mastering this craft of, mm. of also photo -bashing. Yes. Good. Nice one. I wish the cover had a different... Um, a higher uh, resolution. Yeah. But is it better here on the sleeve? No, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. Huh. Okay. Yeah, maybe. That's interesting. The color is very different. On top of that. Yeah. Anyway, can be the material, the printing, everything happens. Uh, thank you for these. Like these were really interesting books. 
You should buy more, so we can do this more often. Um, I thought about getting an, an issue of Praline. <laughs> no TD Max here. Um, <laughs> is there any book you want to get next? Um, yeah, I, I, a friend of mine is publishing. And <laughs> <laughs> Not for real. Like, is there anything you are like? Because I think, I think you're gonna get the June one when you watched it. Yeah, probably. The the thing with books for me is I go in a store and I fall in love with one and then mm. I get it. Mm. I, and I think I never planned a book. So you're not an online shopper when it no, comes to books? No, no. Mm. But Figurines you... and Lego. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But books uh, I, I discover. But that's that's something that's your privilege because you're in Hamburg and you have all these amazing stores there. So I don't I don't really have that luxury. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a choice. Man, thanks so much for uh, spending the weekend with me and talking art and in the end making this recording. I'm really happy we did this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Where's my cake? <laughs> I'm gonna get you some cake now. <laughs> and uh, until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have you hunt me? Ouch. <laughs> I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs>